each other. Hi guys, me and Ginger Hi. here. Uh, we want to everyone. talk about I'm jumping straight in. We wanted to talk about the 2023, the year of the water rabbit, and how it lands on January the 22nd, which Ginger did some work on that day. I did do. I did do. And I found it really curious. I noticed that the water rabbit year, uh, so for example, this year, the water rabbit year digits, so two and two and three add up to seven. And I noticed that all the other water rabbit years back to, I think, early 1800s and even forward, I projected forward to see if the pattern continued. And so I went ahead a little while and I noticed that every one of the water of the rabbit years, pardon me, the rabbit years adds to the numbers one, four or seven. And I noticed that. Uh, so this being a seven year, I looked at the date um, I looked at a number of dates this January because we can all feel it coming. And if you look at uh, January 22nd, 2023, you look at the number one, first month, there's the one, the two and two is four and the year is seven. There's that one, four, seven pattern. And I feel like that might be relevant. I'm curious to hear what other people might think about that. One to me represents the number of the magician. Uh, four is the number of the emperor Seven, again, is the year that we're in, the energy of the year that we're in. As This is how I see it. And uh, I think that that's quite significant. And I'm curious about the 147 vibration, what that all means. What does the water rabbit mean to people? I think that there is a strong connection to that. The last time we were in a water rabbit year was 1963. So kind of really curious because history is sort of known to repeat. What did we experience then? I noticed like some negotiations, agreements. I think they introduced television, color TV. And uh, what else came out at that time? What can we maybe expect to see this year? Can it I, was my can thought. I, when can I interrupt, looking, yeah. interrupt yes, one please. second? Um, yeah. My niece, when I was over in the UK, she was only little. She's only about four or five. And she comes in one day and she says to her mum, Mum, what what did people wear in like in the sixties and nineteen sixties? And Julie said, "Oh, they, uh, it, they wore things like bright zigzaggy things and and bright oranges and bright yellows and circles and squirrels." And Megan went, "Really? I thought everything was black and white before 1967. <laughs> That was great. I don't know where she well, heard that, but she said that everything was black and white before 1967. Well, you could certainly see how they would think that. You yeah. know, we didn't get that color until, you know, it was only on the TV, obviously, but I can see how children would see it that way. That's fun. All right. Well, um, I'm just going to share the screen because I want to share a couple of things with you. Um, right. Sharing the screen. Sharing my screen. Sharing my screen. Right, doing it. Kim, you found some really interesting things about this uh, upcoming year. Well, I'm really just playing with it. I'm just playing with the idea of the rabbit, really, and what the rabbit means. So I just yes. pulled a couple of things up. One was, um, oh, this one, which is the uh, the animal druid cards I've, I've had these cards and used them regularly for probably 20 or 30 years but they've got a rabbit in there and i just want to say a little bit about this rabbit he's actually a hare and the druid name for him is gear and that's him there in the middle of my screen and one of the things about this or any rabbit this being the year of the rabbit that's beginning on the 22nd of January is I always find the idea of the concept of the rabbit to be a little bit mischievous, a little bit off kilter in relation to honesty. And it's not a bad thing. It's more like a little bit naughty or it's more like bending the truth because it benefits you a little bit, but it doesn't really harm anybody else. And I see there's a 
deceitful nature, which I think is going to come through this year in blazing colors. And it's going to really highlight those people around you that are being deceitful or even if it's slightly, I'm just telling you, but it's going to be glaringly obvious. It's going to be blatant. Anyway, I'm going to read this bit out to you. So it's saying that the, it shows the card, the card, uh, the original hair of Britain from the Arctic, which yes. was later replaced by the common brown hair. And it says gear, which is the rabbit, brings the benefits of balance and intuition. And we're talking about this year. So it brings this through, the balance and the intuition, the promise of fulfillment. So there'll be opportunities this year for, for you to fulfill things that you haven't had an opportunity to do before. It says it's a creature of the goddess, the moon and the night. And yet it also represents the dawn, the brightness in the east. And it's the mm. most adept of animals at shape-shifting and can never be surely we sure where the hair is in this world or the other world. It represents intuition. So we're talking about what this year will be to us. I'm, I'm externalizing it by talking about the hair. We're talking about the rabbit. But what this year is going to be is we're never going to be sure whether we're here or we're in the other world. So there may that be makes, like, does that make sense? That makes a terrifying amount of sense to me right now because, uh, well, I shouldn't use the word terrifying, but it's been a really kind of a freaky Mandela kind of experience for me so far this year. I'm having a lot of little Mandela moments. So it's kind of like being in both worlds. I've had a few people describe that sensation to me a few times recently, which is quite interesting. As we, I think, learn to become authentic, it's feeling a little bit like, and we are in the month of January when we look back on the head. So it's kind of a natural state of being at this moment, but the, hearing that about that card is, uh, and sounds like a beautiful deck. I think I'd like to learn a little more about that. Well, I, the I'll, Druid deck you said? I'm gonna link it, it was, below i'm yeah. gonna link oh, i'm gonna yeah. find a That's link beautiful. to it and link it below because it's a really nice deck and it's all it it's all druid animals so i even use it sometimes to help people with um uh with finding their animal spirit totem and that type of thing i so really think i will be investing in that book it sounds it looks beautiful i love the graphics the 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 language that they use is very soothing and natural and I really do it resonates and uh, what you said about the, our deceitful nature being brought to light I think you're bang on about that Kim I've had a number of conversations I'm privileged to work around a lot of um, or be around at least a lot of people who are highly sensitive psychics and uh, people who just trust in the knowing and uh there have been a number of discussions recently about, you know, what will it take for people to realize that I, you can't trick me like that. Like, I cannot be fooled. You're going to have to get your story straight. You know, you cannot live in yeah. these two worlds of yeah. deception, you know, wearing a mask in one world and, you know, pretending to be someone that you're not. You can't do both. You have to choose. And that's what the year of the chariot's all about. It's black yeah. or white to pick which way you're going. Yep. And, and be authentic. Absolutely. Authentic. Because 100%. the deception not going to wash. You can't get away with it anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, all right. So the rest of this is talking about the hair bringing excitement and rebirth, fertile abundance, and the willingness to release each creative cycle as it comes to an end so this is, is this feeling of one cycle coming to an end and another cycle starting this could be tied into what um uh, claudio had been talking about on his channel in relation to I the do. return of eris but i do think that we as individuals have to be very 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 knowing of what's coming out of our mouths and what action we're taking that's, I agree. And no following, I think, in the future. We're not, we're, there's less and less of the following. I mean, certainly we can listen to each other, but we'll be relying more and more on data that comes from higher sources than books and, and exactly. things like that. You know, exactly. the type of data that we'll be relying on is, is very organic and it comes from our higher spirit, our higher self. Yep. 
So that'll be the most valuable source of information as we, you know, uh, adapt to the knowings, you know, we now know. So what will we do with that knowing? Yeah. You can't, can't keep doing it the way other people want us to do it. It won't work. No, I agree. Up to do it the way we feel. So okay. um, with, with regards to this 2022 and this Chinese rabbit, the new year, Crystal Time did a really good video. I, um, I agree. And I'll give you the link to that below. But she mentions in this video a movie called The, not The Moon. I thought that was lovely, actually. Oh, beautiful uh, picture. Yeah. Um, this is actually about, this ties crypto in. <laughs> Moon Rabbit is distributed by crypt, a crypto conglomerate. Oh. That was really weird, but I just really loved the little sparkies flying around and the green and the rabbit on the grass. Sorry. Got a bit well, the color happy. is uh, blue, blue heart. It's blue chakra, sorry, throat chakra and the green heart chakra. And I'm really noticing that's what a lot of people are working on right now is their throat mm -hmm. chakra as they become more authentic and opening their heart and allowing, you know, themselves to explore because it's been a scary place. You know, the, the heart we've had it closed for a long while. And uh, so I think, again, a lot of people think that they have the heart chakra open and all the other chakras are great, but we're about to learn that that's not quite true. Right. So this here is something that Crystal Moon was talking about in her video. And she's talking mm. about the original Le Voyage de la Luna in 1902, which is the original color movie an original color movie or a movie that was made in 1902 and colorized. Now, how did that uh, relate to Coney? What she said in the movie is that each part was uh, connected to the, so the zodiac. She said, it's all here. She said, Venus is here. It's all there symbolically. And uh, I'm using a small mobile device, so it's a little hard for me to see and recall right. what she was showing us earlier. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, and it might have been a different image actually, now that I take a closer look. Well, um, what it, yeah. what it prompted in me was suddenly I remembered about watching a movie about this movie, about this voyage yeah. of La, La Luna. And what the movie was is it's called Hugo. Uh, it was a 2011 movie and it's set in Paris in 1931. And I will link that to you guys as well. And that, that is a movie about somebody, I think it's a movie, and um, it's a long time since I've seen it, uh, probably 10 years since I've seen it, but I think it's a movie about somebody being deceitful. And I think it's a movie about their deceitfulness being exposed. Um, I won't tell you too much about it because I think it was actually a pretty good movie. I think I'm going to watch it because it's uh, orphans are obviously a great interest to me. I think I have another idea about why oh, so much information about the orphan has come forward. And I think that the orphan um, story is going to come to represent our inner child. So the inner child is what we're all working on. The child is the teacher. And I feel as though we've always had it wrong. We've been trying to teach the child when the child comes in a form of pure spirit yes pure spirit energy and we could be learning so much and yes they're you know they're a little dependent at first but there's so much that we can learn by observing and remembering who we are as we uh, just take some of the weight off of the children and let them just be children again it would be lovely to see that i think but i think that it all ties into the inner child work that you, we're, we're asked to do can you also you made reference to the fact that the rabbit and the name Coney Island and that Coney is another word for rabbit. And that was a bit of a shock in light of the work that we did earlier about the uh, Cabbage Patch Kids. And if you've watched the series of from Mind Unveiled, they have uh, also explored Coney Island 
and the incubator babies. And these were things that we talked about in that video, that kind of disturbing video. Yeah. Um, but this is reminiscent of that. The videos that uh, Crystal Time has presented to us, the moon video, I uh, felt like the graphics were quite similar and the time frame would be quite similar uh, or close. And um, yeah, I'm curious about where these videos are all coming out of. I think France, the first the first like the one with the lady in the cabbage patch field um, yeah like these, that was these really of, old uh, movies where are they yeah. coming from yeah where are they but, all coming out of but that and, one uh, I, yeah, as i said maybe. that one i remembered being mentioned in the hugo movie mm -hmm. and then i looked up in wikipedia the plot and yeah. then during the plot they talk about there you go uh, which they activate the key and it draws the scene from the 90, 1902 movie A Trip to the Moon, once described by Hugo's father. So in I think it, that this movie is basically about somebody stealing his work and presenting it in 1931 as their work. And then... Uh, well, and I think that's quite common. Everything has been uh, altered and whitewashed and... You know, we've we've had a completely different rendition of of reality for the last while, for sure. Uh, things feel a little upside down at times, in fact. So the other the other thing about rabbits, going back to rabbits, sorry, it's a bit old on yeah. the place this, but okay. I was also thinking about Watership Down and that lovely mm. song, you know, bright eyes burning like fire. I won't subject you to my singing because I really have a very good singing voice. <laughs> Well, water uh, shut down. That's interesting. Water for me also represents financial systems. When you think of the words that we use in our financial systems, you know, currency, the streams, the the flow, um, the bank, you know, river bank. Uh, so all that it's all liquid cash assets. flow, it's all uh, liquid flow. asset, yeah, yeah. And so it's all about water. So it's not just emotional. I mean, it's a money. It's all money systems. So now we've got money and rabbits. And so, so fertile. Fertile. Oh. And then we've got this watership down, that wording, watership. So watership. Uh, the watership, I had a dream or something yesterday morning about, it was weird, actually. It was like I woke up to the idea that we were all in a ship together. Mm. And the ship was traveling through. See, I don't think the time is real. Um, so we weren't traveling through time. I think time is oh, an illusion. I but I think that the ship was a representative of everybody within our own personal realm that influences aspects of us that helps us to remember who we are. Yes. And that all of these people, we do this in this ship. So we're traveling together in a ship and that's why it's a relationship or that's why it's a partnership or that's because these people, anybody in our ship represents that capacity for that person to actually influence us to remember. Mm. Remember. Because people say water has memory, right? So water, uh, emotional, emotional waters, memories. You know, I feel that we're sentient beings, most of us, all of us. And you know, uh, I think that we have emotions for one another. So it makes sense to me that we are in ships with each other, you know, relationships, companionships, you know, however, there's so many words that have ship, friendship. No, citizenship. And they're pretty sentient words also. They're hmm. so all right, let me let me read it. It's kind of like a dream floating out on a tide, following the river of death downstream. Oh, hmm. is it a dream? There's a fog on the horizon, a strange glow in the sky, and nobody seems to know where to go. What does it mean? Oh, it's a dream. Bright eyes burning like fire. Bright eyes, how can we close and fail? How can the light that burned so brightly suddenly turn so pale? Now, I feel that relates to somebody 
being pa- really passionate about something. I don't know whether you've ever, have you ever been in a room sitting chatting to somebody and then they get really animated what they're talking about. They get really excited and their eyes start to brighten up. Um, I've got a friend of mine that does it when she talks about cleaning products and it's a left. Okay. <laughs> She just starts talking about cleaning products and she gets really like, oh, it cleans it so well. And it's like, oh, right. She's passionate about it. <laughs> and it's such she's a funny thing. She's obviously passionate about it. Yeah, it would be. It's a really funny it thing to be. be passionate. It's not like getting passionate about a dish or passionate about somebody or anyway. So I think the point is, is that the the brightness of our eyes is relevant it it, oh. it, it it it's a an indication it's a it's kind of a language in it's in itself um so that makes sense to me also because i feel you know we're wearing sunglasses and we think we're protecting our eyes but you know if you've ever done any amount of sun gazing then you'll know that it's kind of beneficial mm-hmm. to your eyes so obviously i don't recommend doing it in the middle of the day when it's extremely hot but first thing in the morning and when the sun is setting, it's a beautiful time to bring the sun's rays and all over you. And uh, especially in your eyes without sunglasses. And uh, I mean, if you can't tolerate it, then so be it. But I do think that there's benefits to that. And uh, I think that we can see the light in people's eyes. We know when people are, are, are happy and we know when they're sad because there's a lack of light in their eyes. Yeah, exactly. And then you can. But the, and... the sun is part of that, like having the vitamin D. You know, they say. Uh, I don't personally be- believe in all of that, but I do think it's important for us to be in the sun. Yeah. I think it's our life force energy. Yeah. It's our solar plexus, and once again, it's the. To me, it's the child. It's the look at the sun card in the tarot. You see the, uh, the child on the horse, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's this soul or it's the soul or it's i don't know and the soul solar s-o-u-l soul and what is plexus anyway you know to me it's like that part that i don't know it just feels um it feels kind of inner child to me yeah i agree and the the part of us that we've all been uh harmed by these stories of the orphans that are our grandparents and our our ancestors, we are their descendants. So what happened to them happened to me. And, uh, you know, I think that this is coming out. So this water rabbit year, I think is really going to tie into the orphans. And uh, that tied into this whole moon story somewhere, Kim. And our deceptive nature, we can't lie about this any longer. We have to, we have to confront it. And a number of other things we have to get really real about, I think. So going back to the rabbit yeah. and the year of the rabbit and what the rabbit represents in relation to, and I think I've shut that, no, I think I've shut that page down. But the rabbit, oh, I know what it's going to talk about. It's going to talk about this, which is uh, a movie put together by um, D, D. Murphy 25. I'll give you a link to his YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. But he d- in this particular video, it's really good, really worth watching both this Navigating the Matrix Part 1 and Part 2. And I'll link it in the bottom below. But what he's actually doing here is he's actually showing a representation of chaos. And he's showing it mm-hmm. as um, a traffic system that doesn't have any traffic lights and these cars are just at this interchange or at this crossing. And if you look at the flow of it without any need or necessity of lights, and then he goes on to show what happens when you put traffic lights in there. And the section where he shows you where you put traffic lights in it, it blocks all of this up. It, it shows that, you know, people are waiting like five, ten minutes to turn right. Um, that the natural order of the world is that without control. But it doesn't, 
it's just basically saying that traffic lights don't make it better. That's for sure. They they're saying it makes it it safer. They're saying that control makes things safer. But the actual, if you look at this, I mean, people aren't hitting each other. There's not accidents happening every two seconds. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. But it's, he's just it's using busy it. and to watch. But uh, I think I've even I've seen it in other countries, like much more volume. And yeah, no, it's totally doable. It's because we're energetic beings. We get into the flow, similar to a school of fish. Yeah. And this is where we're taken uh, as fools because we are that easy to lead. Yeah. You know, so it's important for us to take our, our thoughts back, you know, yeah. and really focus our attention on what we do want because we know our thoughts create. Yep. And uh, yeah, we can have this kind of flow with one another. I really yeah. do believe that. that if we get flow. into that state, if we get into that state of being authentic, and um, I feel it's inevitable, it's coming. Yeah, me too. And, that, and I think that that's what this year is about. It's about being in the natural flow. Like I said, there's a rabbit there, so that there's a little bit of mischievousness or dishonesty or naughtiness there but it's not in the form of I mean anybody that's deliberately doing doing it is going to be standing out like dog's balls anybody that's doing it out of innocence it's different um I I agree and well and I think it's it's gentle and tender and I don't think anybody's going to confront that and mm -hmm. uh but the rest, I do think it's time for us to open the throat chakra because that kind of that kind of trouble only exists when we're silent. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. so it's important, it's important for us to speak it and uh, clear those blocks, you know, take one one piece at a time and really use this time to, you know, reflect, live your best life, spend a little time in reflection, and uh, imagine us in that type of a flow again. You know, no hindrances, no blocks, no fear, you know, no dangerous intersections, because I think it's true that they're more dangerous. Yeah, It doesn't surprise me that that's true, because uh, we have roundabouts here in, in Ontario now that we never used to have, and uh, they've really caught on because people are, are insisting that they're um, safer, and they seem a lot safer. It doesn't slow us down, allows us to continue uh, you know, you slow down a little, you observe and make sure that you're safe to proceed, but there's no need to stop have you in ever most seen, cases. Have you ever seen the roundabout, like a really big roundabout, like in London or something, you've got like um, something like Marble Arch. Um, sounds about chaos, I'll just see if it brings anything up. But, um, Some of the places you see around the world. Oh my goodness, I don't know. How oh, people... Look at this. <laughs> oh, look at it. Oh, I'll just, I'll just show you this. I'm not sure what oh, this is. This <laughs> insane circle roundabout. Oh God, I was watching these adverts. Okay. That one. Look oh, this... at that. So you come on to the roundabout and you do this and you. You come onto that one that way, and then you go around the middle that way. So you move into the middle. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's one in um, oh. <laughs> there's one in Milton Keynes that I've, I've actually been around, and it's but it's weird because you got to kind of drive all the way around to go around and then drive all the way around. I just so, noticed something looking at and, that, and they're both. They're going both mm. ways. The traffic's going both ways. Oh, my. See that? Look mm. at that. Oh, but they're coming from so so many directions. Look at that. It's like and a circuit that, board. It's like a circuit board. It's wild. Absolutely Michelle wild. Michelle Gibson does a deep dive worldwide. She goes and looks at her, her viewer comments and travels the world with their comments and explores areas like this would be really interesting to look at because that's huge energy right there right or wrong i'm reminded of um isn't there there's a number of symbols that come to mind with looking at that. 
it's highly symbolic, highly energetic. Um, yeah, a lot could be a lot could be seen in that image mm, mm. from that from that perspective. Mm. It looks like an eye, like right in the middle, for one thing. It kind yeah. of reminds me of uh, yeah. symbols for like six six six. I'm trying to think of the app that uh, I don't know if it'll work. I'm trying to think. Yeah, it won't work. I uh, can't think of the app. There's an image, a logo that uh, Google escapes me. Yep. Thank you. And uh, that's exactly what I was trying to picture. So you can see that. The three sixes and, and the different. Like, um... the click, 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 right? And so, but that's the number of man, supposedly. Again, all speculation. I don't know. What I. The six, six, six carbon. What I think it is is I think I think it's all about the six and the nine and the three, just like Telsa said. And I yeah. think the, the six is the spiral one way and the nine is the spiral of energy the other way. And the three is representation of the coil that changes the direction from one way to the other. I think the six represents the material reality. The nine represents the spiritual reality. And the where we're meant to be getting to is a balance between the two. So we can't throw one out without having the other, because obviously we wouldn't be able to live if we didn't have a material reality. No, but that's I, true. But I think that, and, and I know there's a lot of stuff about us just being an observer, but that's not really practical either. Because if we're just no. an observer, we're not going to be taking responsibility for ourselves to prepare food, to take do what we need to do in order to help others um no that's true and but sometimes we have to sit in observer mode because uh, there's nothing that we can do to yes you know we, we yes. can offer wisdom and but then there's nothing we can do beyond that and uh you know offer a little guidance or suggestion and but sometimes people are not ready not yeah. ready to uh accept that there may be an, another path or you know another option and uh, that lady seemed quite hopeless today. She came in and she said, oh, it'll never happen. It'll never happen. This will always happen to me. And I, my heart really, I felt for her because, boy, she's really wearing it. Like she's burdened by that, those beliefs that she's plagued by. And uh, I just, I would have liked to have uh, been able to help her, but we, I have to accept that I can't. Yeah, I know. We so just can't. Think, Some people no, we just can't help. No, that's right. And uh, you know, I still think that they'll find their way. Everybody in their own time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as long as they're being authentic. That's that's it. yes. That's it the keeps word. coming back to that. Not yeah. deceptive, authentic, being and, real with ourselves. Is this right for me? And being, being bold. I I I've got friends yeah. of mine that have never been bold before, and they've all of a sudden started to be bold. They're starting to come back to the stories of how they've been bold, and it's weird. It's that's like sweet. a new energy that's come through. Um, I love it. Really cool. I think it. I think it's perfect because I think that it's long overdue. We've been living sort of, you know, kind of a robotic existence, if you will, and uh, we're already robot, you know, on the hamster wheel of life, and and uh, doing what we always do, you know because it's this time and it's that time. And like you said, time is man-made and money, I think, is man-made. And, uh, you know, all of these constructs that we've agreed to, I don't think we're going to agree to it for very much longer. And that's uh, the reason why it's coming crashing down. And I agree. And there's another, I mean, it, it's really quite scary when you look at what the intention is of the powers that be or what they intend to bring in as a part of the alternative, but that's only their intention. It's not real necessarily at this stage. And it may well be, be needed to be brought down for that, for other reasons. That's that, right. That well, we, I feel it already has been and what we're seeing is theater, pure theater. And, uh, but I can't seem to, you know, not everybody can see it that way. It's very real to a lot of people still. To me, they're, they're very highly paid actors. And uh, I don't believe that they they have control of anything. No. Um, it's our illusion. Yeah. 
that that's what we're trying to overcome that we've not given them consent we didn't know uh, who these people were what their agendas were we do not consent as a species we're mm-hmm. sentient we're we're kind we're not like that by nature it's yeah. it's um it's Ahriman, mm-hmm. you know it's that other force that uh, i think humanity will reject and has already rejected. right i'm gonna cut yeah. it down off there uh, so it's not too long i will well, um I'll catch you later. So bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for listening and comment. And remember to subscribe and like. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye for now. Bye for now.